Hi, my name is Ethan Hine. Welcome to Play With Your Music. In this series of videos, we're going to be talking about rhythm, how it works, and how to program various well-known beats into a drum machine. So in this video, we're just going to be doing some basic rhythm terminology, uh, different ways to visualize rhythms, and uh, just some big conceptual stuff. In the next video, we're going to get into actual music, and we're going to talk through some famous beats in various genres and styles. And in the third video, we're going to talk about swing, um, which is kind of a mystical concept, but a very important one. So let's uh, dive right in. OK. Um, in these videos, we're going to be exclusively talking about 4-4 time, which is a meter. And all 4-4 time means is you're counting 1, 2, 3, 4. One, two, three, four. Um, the reason we're only going to be talking about 4-4 four, four time is that the enormous majority of the music that you hear in your everyday life is in 4-4. Four, four. Um, probably about 98% of rock, pop, hip-hop, dance, whatever. You do occasionally see 3-4, which is 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. And there are some other time signatures as well. For the most part, you don't care. 4-4 four, four is the important one. So what you're seeing here are four different ways of subdividing 4-4 four, four time. At the bottom, this is a whole note. And the whole note means uh, just the full duration of a measure of 4-4. Four, four. And a measure of 4-4 four, four is just 1, 2, 3, 4. So a whole note sounds like this. Uh, pretty simple. Next up, we've got half notes, which, as their name suggests, divides the measure in half. So each half note is two beats long, so you've got uh, uh, like that. Uh, uh. Uh, next, we've got quarter notes. And again, like the name suggests, we're dividing up the measure into quarters. So each one of these guys is just a beat. So it makes it nice and simple to count quarter notes. You just go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Next, we get um, eighth notes. And again, like the name suggests, you're dividing up the measure into eight equal parts. Um, now, counting gets to be a little bit trickier, because we've got to have names for these guys, these beats that are in between one and two, between two and three, between three and four. So the way that you count eighth notes is by giving these guys uh, an and. So you go one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Um, and this and is called the and of one, oops, because it follows beat one. This and is called the and of two, this and is the and of three, and this and is the and of four. Finally, up top we've got sixteenth notes. Um, the way that you count these are 1e e and a 2e e and a 3e e and a 4e e and a 1e e and a 2e e and a 3e e and a 4e e and a, which is stressful and annoying. Everyone hates counting 16th notes, and we will not be doing it in any of these videos. All right. Um, there are several different ways of visually representing rhythms on a page. Um, what you have here are eight different ways to notate a rhythm called son clave, which is an Afro-Cuban pattern that we're going to be talking about in the next video. It goes like this. Uh, you have definitely heard this rhythm many, many times in your life, um, and not just in Afro-Cuban music, but also in rock, jazz, hip-hop, dance music. It shows up in all kinds of places. So these first four are uh, just variations on standard um, music notation. Um, down here, we've got some specialized systems used by ethnomusicologists and computer scientists. And the one that we are really interested in is number five. This is called a time unit box system. And it's kind of self-explanatory, right? Each one of these boxes is just a beat. So you've got one and two and three and four. Oops. 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and. And the boxes that are filled have hits in them. So you've got 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and. Um, and not only is the time unit box system a nice and intuitive system for ethnomusicologists, but it's also very important for you, the electronic music producer, because pretty much all electronic music production software is based on the metaphor of the time unit box system. For example, this is the drum machine programming interface in a program called Ableton Live. 
very widely used by uh, techno hip hop producers. And it basically is just a time unit box system. You've got uh, a row for each instrument in the drum kit. So you've got the bottom row is for the kick drum, then the rim shot, the snare, the clap, the hi-hat, and so on. You've got a column for each subdivision of the beat. And the boxes are where the drum hits are. So you've got a kick drum right here, you've got a kick drum here, a kick drum here, a kick drum here. You've got a snare and a clap here and here. You've got hi-hats here, 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 and here, and here. Um, and if you spend some time with, uh, with one of these things, it should be hopefully pretty intuitive and self-explanatory, um, although it may not seem that way at first glance. Um, this is a quick aside. There's a website called Hip Hop Transcriptions by a guy named Charlie Helly. And he has found a way to turn standard music notation into a time unit box system just by writing it out on graph paper. So each box on the graph paper is a 16th note. And so even if you don't know standard music notation, it's pretty easy to count along with his transcriptions because each, each box is a beat. Pretty simple. And there is a link to his website in the description of the video, so go check him out. So, Rhythm is repetitive, right? It's circular. And to me, it makes the most sense to represent it circularly also. Um, so what you're seeing here is a time unit box system that's just been wrapped in a circle. And I've color coded it. We'll get to the colors in a sec. But you can see I've uh, labeled the boxes one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Um, inside the circle, it's labeled slightly differently. We've got 1e and a 2e and a 3e and a 4e and a. Um, this set of labels on the inside is actually the standard way that you would count a measure of 4 4 time. Um, you would count it in 16th notes. But as I said earlier, everyone hates counting in 16th notes. And there is an alternate system which is called cut time. And cut time just means you count everything half as fast. So instead of treating this as one measure of 4 4, we're treating it as two measures of 4 4. So counting it one and two and three and four and. Uh, cut time just really makes everybody's life easier. Everybody loves it and I will be using it in all of the examples in the next couple videos. Uh, oh, the colors. So <laughs> um, the first beat in each measure of four four is called the downbeat. Um, it's called that because when you're conducting, you go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And so your hand literally goes down on the first beat. That's why it's called the downbeat. Um, the backbeat is beat three. And the backbeat is where you clap to rock, funk, blues, jazz, techno, hip hop, whatever other kind of American dance popular type music. So you go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Um, it, in classical music, you're taught to clap on uh, one, but in rock, pop, other American vernacular type musics, you count on three. Very important to know that. Um, the green guys are off beats. And they're a little weaker than the downbeat and the backbeat. Um, and the gray guys are uh, even weaker than the offbeats. And weak just means unexpected. If you put drum hits on one and three, it's going to sound kind of solid and obvious and predictable. If you put them on two and four, it's going to be a little bit groovier and more surprising. And if you put them on the ands, on the gray ones, uh, they're going to be very surprising. And Putting stuff on unexpected beats is called syncopation, and syncopation is crucial to making things sound good. And we'll be talking about that a lot in the next video. Um, rhythm isn't really a circle, though, right? Because rhythm moves forward in time. So what rhythm actually is is a spiral. Um, each time around the circle, you're really advancing in time. So uh, you're really going one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Right? Each time around the circle is a little bit different from the previous one and from the next one. Um, and I like the spiral because it shows you right, beat one every time through the pattern has the same function. Beat two every time through the pattern has the same function. Uh, same with three and four. Um, you're not going to see the spiral representation of time just because it's really hard to draw them, but I think it's a good image to keep in your head. 
So in the next video, we'll be talking about a bunch of specific drum patterns and how to program them. So check it out.